Welcome everybody to subchapter 6.2 with the chapter which deals with the open economy. In this subchapter, I'll roll out one economic model and we can use this model to highlight what happens to saving, investment and net exports in case that the one or the other shock hits the economy we are looking at. So let's start with equation eight, which is this important identity where we have savings minus investment on the left hand side. And this has to be equal to net exports. On the left hand side, we have national savings, which consists out of private savings and savings of the government. And the difference between national savings and investment has to be equal to net exports. Maybe you think you can use this equation to answer the question which uh, says what happens if government increases government expenditures. So when government increases government expenditure, the left hand side of this equation becomes smaller. It becomes smaller because there is a negative sign in front of G. But this increase in government spending could lead to an increase in income so that y increases. Or it could be the case that the interest rate increases so that investment is affected. Or it could be the case that net exports decrease. So these kind of adjustments are, of course, possible outcomes, but we don't know what kind of adjustment will take place. And therefore, this rearranged accounting identity does not help to answer this question. Like we need a macroeconomic model, we need a macroeconomic model to answer this question, what happens if government increases government expenditure? So let's come up with some assumptions. We are looking at a small open economy, which does not affect the world interest rate. So we are looking at a small open economy. It has perfect capital mobility and due to the fact that this economy is small, it does not affect the world interest rate. But it is the other way around. It is the case that the world interest rate determines the domestic interest rate. Therefore, once more, R is equal to R star. The foreign interest rate level R star determines the domestic interest rate level R. The world interest rate is an exogenous variable. Let's have a look at some other assumptions. We assume that the economy's output is once more fixed by its factors of production, capital and labor, and its production function. So Y is also an exogenous variable. The GDP level is exogenous. Then private consumption depends on disposable income. Here we have this consumption function and in brackets, there is disposable income Y minus T. And we assume that investment depends in a negative way on the interest rate. So investment is a function of the real interest rate R. And in case that R increases, then investment decreases. In the next step, we can combine the identity and our assumptions and we arrive at a macroeconomic model. In equation 15, we have once more the relationship. On the left hand side, we have the net exports. On the right hand side, output minus the value of the domestic expenditures in form of consumption, government spending, and investment. When we now use our assumptions, then it is the case that there is a bar above the y variable because output is capacity constrained by the factors of labor and capital. Also here in brackets, we put a bar above this variable in order to indicate that this variable is exogenous. Then we also use the assumption that investment depends on the interest rate R. So these terms in equation 16 can be combined to the variable S bar. Saving does not depend on the real interest rate, but investment depends in a ne negative way on the real interest rate. So let's try to come up with a graph 
let's use this graph to highlight this relationship we have seen before. In the first step, we have to put some labels on the vertical and the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, we have the real interest rate, and on the horizontal axis, there is investment and savings. One line symbolizes savings. So this straight line here is this vertical line. This symbolizes savings and IR symbolizes investment. Uh, this curve has a negative slope. In case that we would examine a closed economy, it would be the case that this would be the equilibrium interest rate. So in a closed economy, it would be the case that in saving has to be equal to investment. So this would be the interest rate level in case that we are looking at a closed economy. But here it is the case that we are looking at the open economy. Let's assume that the world interest rate is higher than the domestic interest rate in the autarky scenario. So let's assume that this is the world interest rate so that this is the level of investment. And this is the level of savings. The difference between investment and saving gives us the net exports. Net exports seem to be positive here. Net exports are larger than zero because saving is larger than investment. This is also mentioned on one slide of the textbook. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We have this saving curve here and the downward sloping investment curve. This is the interest rate level in case that we would look at a closed economy setting, but it is assumed that the world interest rate is higher, so that this is a level of investment, this is a level of saving, and the difference between uh, saving and investment, this is net exports, and here in this situation net exports is positive, so there is a trade balance surplus. Now that we have rolled out the model, we can use this model to highlight what happens if. What happens if the domestic government increases government spending or decreases taxes? What happens if the world interest rate increases, maybe due to the fact that the foreign government increases government spending? Or what happens if the autonomous component of investment increases which will lead to a shift of the investment function. The analysis goes step by step in the following form. Like in a first step, we want to examine how would the shock be digested in a closed economy setting. And then we are analyzing how the shock is digested in a small open economy setting. So, in the first step, we look at a fiscal expansion in a small open economy. Let's indicate the initial situation. So, initially, we are assuming that R star, the world interest rate, is at this level. So, that initially, it is the case that saving is equal to investment in the initial situation, and hence Nx. The trade balance is equal to zero, trade is balanced, exports are equal to imports. Now we have to think about what happens if the government increases government spending or when the government reduces the tax rate. In this situation, public saving will decrease so that saving of the society decreases. The saving curve will shift to the left. Let's indicate it in the diagram. The saving curve shifts uh, to the left because of the fact that the government increases government spending or 
because of the fact that the government decreases the tax rate. In a closed economy setting, it would be the case that the interest rate increases would increase to this level here. But in an open economy, this is not the case. The domestic interest rate will stay at the world interest rate level so that only public saving decreases to this level. So this is S2 and investment stays on the same level as before. This is S2 and this is I2. S2, I2. The difference between saving and investment will be covered by net exports. Net exports will become negative. So uh, the trade balance will show a negative sign. The trade balance will deteriorate due to the fact that the government increases government spending and the savings decrease. Let's check whether this is in line with the graph of the textbook. Uh, initially, it's a case that the world interest rate is at the level R star. We are in the blue situation, so that saving is equal to investment. In the first situation, it is a case that the economy begins with a, with a balanced trade balance. But then it is the case that in a second step, uh, the fiscal expansion leads to a shift of the saving function to the left. And it is the case that saving decreases to this level while investment stays on the former level. The difference between investment and saving is covered here by NX. NX becomes negative because of the fact that investment is larger than savings. So an increase in government spending or like a decrease in taxes will lead to a deficit of the trade balance. Let's check whether this is in line with the empirical evidence for the US. We can see here this graph and we know that in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan was the president of the US and he performed an expansionary fiscal policy in the form of a tax cut. When the government decreased the taxes, it also decreased public savings and therefore national savings decreased. What happened to the trade balance? You can see here in the upper part of the diagram the deterioration of the trade balance in the 1980s so that the theoretical evidence is in line with the empirical evidence. So here we derived that a fiscal expansion will lead to a trade balance deficit, and this is backed by the empirical evidence. Let's analyze what happens if the world interest rate increases. Once more, I would like to do that in um, PowerPoint. So this is the initial situation. It is assumed that this is the world interest rate in the beginning. This is R star in the initial situation. And uh, it seems to be the case that saving is equal to investment in the situation one. Saving is equal to investment so that trade is balanced. Net exports are equal to zero. Now let's check what happens if the world interest rate increases. When the world interest rate increases to the level R2 star, it is the case that this has no impact on savings. Saving is on the same level as before. This is S2. But due to the fact that the interest rate increases, investment reacts and investment decreases. So investment is on the level I2. Saving is larger than investment, so that the difference between investment and saving represents an improvement of the trade balance. Nx is larger than zero. So this leads to an improvement of the trade balance because investment decreases. 
Let's check whether this is in line with the graph in the textbook. Initially, the interest rate in the world markets is equal to R1 star. Saving is equal to investment, so that trade is balanced initially. Due to the fact that the interest rate increases to the level R2 star, it is the case that investment decreases to a lower level, while saving stays on the same level as before. Saving is larger than investment, so the trade balance improves and net exports are positive. So an increase in the world interest rate leads to reduced investments and to a trade surplus. The next chunk I would like to talk about is an increase in investment. Let's also analyze this shock in this diagram. So initially, um, we have to indicate the world interest rate, our star. Saving is equal to investment in the initial situation. And then it is a case that investment picks up, investment increases, and this leads to a shift of the investment curve to the right. So investment increases, the investment curve shifts to the right. This is I1, this is I2, also depends on the interest rate. And then we can check what happens to investment. So investment will increase, investment increases to the level I2, while saving stays on the level S2. When we look at the horizontal distance between saving and investment, so this horizontal distance here represents a deterioration of uh, the trade balance, net exports are negative, so it leads uh, to a trade balance deficit. Let's also check here whether this is in line with the graph in the textbook. So initially, this is the interest rate level, saving is equal to investment. An increase in investment demand shifts the investment curve to the right, so that saving does not change at all, because we are staying here with respect to savings, but investment increases. And so this increase in investment demand leads to a trade balance deficit. Let's also check whether this is in line with the empirical evidence. Like once more, we want to have a look at this graph. And we can see here a period in the 1990s where investment picks up. Investment increases because of the fact that here uh, internet companies are created in the US. This is a build up of the dot com bubble, which was bursting in the year 2000. So a lot of investment is going on in this time period. And you can check what happens to the trade balance in the same time period. The trade balance deteriorates. So also this theoretical shock increase in investment leads to a trade balance deficit is in line with the empirical evidence is in line with the behavior of the investment function in the 1990s, investment increases, and the trade balance deteriorates. This is the end of chapter 6.2, Saving and Investment.